So I start this video off with a question. How close are we to the return of Jesus to rapture the church? How close? Let me know what you think. I think it's very close. We're going to talk about that today. We'll also bring up some comments of the day and we'll hang out. My name is Tom. You're watching the Watchman River channel. And as I do every single day, I'll remind you I'm not a prophet, never claimed to be one. I'm not a pastor and I don't even think I'm a great teacher. I'm just a dude that loves the Lord. I love talking about the Lord, and I love hanging out with you guys. So get comfortable, grab some hot coffee, grab some hot tea, maybe some grapefruit juice and peanut butter and jelly on cinnamon raisin toast. That's really good. Try that. Or grab whatever you like to eat or drink when you're hanging out with an old friend and a fellow servant of the Lord. All right, let's get busy. It's rainy Saturday morning here, Connecticut, Connecticut River behind me. And all I can think about is how close we are to the rapture of the church. Everything's there. Everything's in place. And I just keep thinking, Lord, how long? How long? And sometimes I start getting uh, really selfish about it. Like, Lord, like a tantrum. Like, come back now. It's perfect. Don't you realize? My timing is perfect, Lord. Lord. <laughs> I think you should come back now. But he doesn't listen to me. And that's that's a good thing. We should all praise him for that. Because he's going to come back and harpazo or rapture the church up to meet him in the clouds. He's going to do it in his perfect time. It's going to be so perfect. Nobody's going to argue with it. Nobody's going to say you were late or you were early. But you got to know Jesus to get raptured. You don't have to do any other, you don't have to do any magic tricks. You don't have to, you got to know Jesus. You got to belong to Jesus for him to take you home, right? Right? When a father takes his kid kids to the mall, he takes them all home. But the father doesn't take the people, the kids that don't belong to him home. That's creepy. <laughs> and he'd get arrested. But you take your children home. So when, when people say, oh, no, only the super spiritual are going to go in the rapture, that's, that's, sorry, that's not true. If you belong to Jesus, I don't care if you don't believe in the rapture. If you belong to Jesus, you will be raptured. You're going home with him. He's taking the ones that belong to him. Let's, uh, let's talk about why we believe we are so close to the return of Jesus. Sometimes we just need these continual reminders. I, I try to remind you guys every single day of what's going on in the world. Continual reminders. Talking about the wars and the rumors of wars that are going on all over the world. We're seeing it every day. Every single day. We're also seeing the earthquakes and the volcanoes. Like, planet Earth is boiling right now. You know, lava shooting out of the earth. The whole world is getting prepared for these horrific seven years that are coming right after the rapture of the church. Time of Jacob's trouble where God deals with the Jewish people. That's why we're not here, the people that belong to the Lord. We're not here. It's God's wrath that's going to be shown to the earth. And he can't show it to us. We're in Christ. We're sealed in Christ. So in order for God to show his wrath, he'd be showing it to Christ because we're in Christ. We're sealed in Christ. And God showed his wrath to Jesus once. And it was when Jesus was on the cross and it was our sins that put him there. Re always remember that. That's why we're not going to be here. Don't let anyone tell you we're going to be here for those seven years. In Revelation, we're gone. There's no instruction. After the third chapter of Revelation, it doesn't talk about the church. We get no instruction on what to do during those seven years. Tribulation saints do, and they're different. Those are people that you talk to right now while you have the opportunity. You tell them about Jesus. You tell them about the rapture. You tell them we're in the end days. And you know what? When Jesus takes you up to the clouds and you're missing they're going to remember everything you said to them. And a lot of them are going to hit their knees and repent. Say, forgive me, Lord. I didn't realize 
This is real. They're tribulation saints. They come to the Lord during that time. It's a different time now. We're in the age of grace, the church age, and it's right near the end. If it were a bucket of water, the bucket's tipped over and the final drips are just dripping out. We're, we're so close to the rapture of the church. How about uh, coming famines? Think they're coming? Have you been paying attention? They're saying there's not going to be enough food for the world next year. And the food prices are going to be, with the food that is there, it's going to be way less selection at way higher prices. It's coming. Droughts, floods, have we not seen droughts of biblical proportions? It's, it's all over the world, too. And that's affecting the food supply greatly. And I always tell you, right now we're eating last year's food. How about all the talk of uh, one world government forming? Can you believe the things that are going on? Do you realize that the, they're framing a one world government, a one world digital currency, a one world religion? Oh my goodness, when I was looking at Bible prophecy back in the 1980s, if I could have gotten a fast forward view to what we're going through, because I think a lot of you people, life just, you know, a lot of stuff has happened the last three years. It's definitely snowballed greatly in the last three years. Before then, I, I think some of you forget what life was like. If you had showed me a fast forwarded vision of what the world is right now, back in the 1980s, I probably would have been like, the rapture is going to be any day then. Come on. <laughs> and I believe that. I believe that. Do you know the stuff that's... Oh, last night there was a large fireball. Did you hear about that? Over Pennsylvania and Ohio. It lasted like 10 seconds. I didn't see any footage, but I read about it. I read about it. But the wickedness that is happening in this world in these last days, these last moments. It's snowballing. People don't hide it anymore. Disney used to hide how evil they are. They were very good at hiding it. I kind of sense they were evil when I watched those early movies when I was a kid. <laughs> it's like everybody's, all the parents are dying in fires. and just didn't feel like, you know, I was always a Looney Tune guy more than a Disney guy. <laughs> Maybe that's what my one of my problems is today. Too many Looney Tunes. <laughs> Too much Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck in this brain. <laughs> Did you hear about this? This is so it this is incredibly sad. It's incredibly dark and evil. And everyone just kind of turns away from talking about it. It's so dark what is happening in Canada. It's so dark that they're killing citizens. And now it's getting to levels of Soylent Green. Do you guys know that movie from the 70s with Charlton Heston and Edward G. Robinson? Uh, I won't, you know, most people know about it. But if you haven't seen it, it's it's got some inappropriate scenes in it. Because I watched it recently, forgetting about how much garbage was in it but it's a powerful movie about and it took place in 2022 i think i think in soylent green they said the year is 2022 and it was made you know 50 some odd years ago but it's like we're living through it look look at this right here canadian retailer simons glamorizes assisted suicide as the most beautiful exit ad this retailer simons did an ad about assisted suicide and listen to this Canada's full-on embrace and glamorization of assisted suicide for physically healthy people is one of the most dire and consequential things happening in the Western world right now Matt Walsh noted recently and now it's getting near and it's not getting nearly as much attention as it should in fact the Quebec based clothes retailer Simons decided to join the fray with a video titled, All is Beauty, or embedded in the video itself, The Most Beautiful Exit. 
The video tells the story of Jennifer Hatch of British Columbia, a 37 year old with chronic pain from Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome who decided to die by assisted suicide on October 23rd. The video was posted to Simon's shopping website and was intended to be an inspiration. Peter Simons, the chief merchant for the chain, stated that the video was an ambitious project. We really felt after everything we've been going through in the last two years, and everyone, everyone's been through the things everyone's been through, maybe it would resonate more to do a project that's less commercially oriented, oriented and more focused on inspiration and values that we hold dear. Assisted suicide. Values that we hold dear. One of those values apparently is assisted suicide. The video is an overt glamorization of assisted suicide. Last breaths are sacred, Hatch said. Everything says Hatch is beauty. The video flashes through images of this young woman as a child of beautiful beaches and lush forests. This is exactly Soylent Green. There was a, there's a scene near the end of Soylent Green where a guy is waiting for his death and he's being shown deer and green fields and childhood pictures. So the video flashes through images of her as a child of beautiful beaches and lush forests of laughter with friends and floating bubbles. Her suicide too, she says, will be beautiful. You just have to be brave enough to see it. It is the same message as dying with dignity. To die with dignity, you must die sooner. I can't believe I'm reading this. I can't believe this is like happening. To live bravely, listen to this one. To live bravely, choose death. But suicide with a smile and soft music is still suicide. It is self-extinction. It is still death. But watching Hatch's video, you might be persuaded just for a moment that it is beautiful. That blows my mind. That is so desperately sad and so wickedly evil. So wickedly evil. And we all turn our heads. These people who do this should be swinging from trees. China, listen to this one, it's a beta test for the new world order. If you want to know the real globalist vis vision for the future, take a look at China today and then multiply the pain and suffering another hundredfold. China is a beta test. The World Economic Forum chairman, Klaus Schwab, said China is a model for many nations. Can you imagine? World Economic Forum founder, and chair Klaus Schwab recently sat down for an interview with a Chinese state media outlet and proclaimed that China was a model for many nations. How sad is that? That we would say that about that country that just a handful of years ago, we would look at them and say, how sad those people are living through that terrible communist country that the, the their, their ideas are their control. Now they're worse than ever, and we're holding them up as a model for the world. Tell me we are not in the end times. Tell me we are not close to the rapture of the church. Los Angeles County experiences 1,200% increase in fentanyl overdose deaths over a five-year period. Five years 1,200% increase in deaths. Because they have that catch and release with the dealers, the people dealing it. They don't, they, they catch them, they release them. And we wonder why so many people are dying from it. It's incredible. It's really incredible. What about the talk? What about all the talk of UFOs? Can you believe how much people are talking about it now? Telling us we need to learn to speak extraterrestrial because if the day is coming when we're going to have to deal with it, 
That's the day after the rapture. What about the boiling pot in Israel right now? It's incredible what's going on there. Sad to say, war is coming there very soon. They can't let Iran just stay unchecked as Iran is days or weeks away from their nuke that they've threatened Israel with for 30 years to wipe them off the face of the map. Can't ignore that. It's coming soon. What about the brain implants? We talked about that yesterday. Neuralink. Elon Musk's brilliant plan. I don't want an operating system in my brain. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank How do you charge the battery in that thing? <laughs> you ever think of that? Maybe there's no battery in it. Whew. I just don't want anyone poking and prodding me, installing things in me. My Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, he knit me in my mother's womb and he installed the only operating system I want. This world is, it's unsustainable the way it's going. The way the economies are either crashing around the world or teeter-tottering. The lawlessness in the world. Do you, can you believe the lawlessness in the world. We talked about, as a nation here in the United States, we talked about how lethal force by police officers was so terrible. We had this national conversation for years about how terrible police were. And now San Francisco has voted to allow robots, artificial intelligence, to use deadly force. Something that doesn't even have a brain to analyze. Is this the right situation or not to use deadly force? Well, they can do it. But police officers can't decide. And I'm not, you know, I'm not either. I'm not I'm not going to get political about this or talk about the use of deadly force. It's it's kind of a case by case. It's so, you know, it's too deep. I'm not getting into that. But you know what I'm saying? Like we're authorizing robots to use deadly force. lawlessness calling what is good evil and calling what is evil good we see it every single day they don't hide it anymore they don't hide the evil anymore i can't believe these companies that put out these ads with just blatant satanism in the ads it's end days it's the end days we are we are at the very end of the 6,000th years since Adam was created. And there's 1,000 years to go. And it's when Jesus is on the throne reigning during the millennial kingdom. It's kind of the Sabbath the Sabbath millennium where we rest. And we're right. It's almost 2023. We're right there. People hate when we say Jesus is coming soon. Even though his last words, his last words recorded in the Bible are, behold, I come quickly. I think the NIV says I'm coming soon. I come quickly. Because to God, a thousand years is as a day. And a day is as a thousand years. So, and he was at the 4,000th year from the creation of Adam. So it was like saying, I'll be there in a couple days. And now here we are. So Jesus said, behold, I come quickly 2000 years ago. But if we say now Jesus is coming soon, people are like, oh my goodness, you've been saying that forever. It's 2000 years later. And we're right at the end of the sixth day in the seven day God plan. I always tell you this in case you don't know it. From Adam to Abraham was 2,000 years. From Abraham to Jesus was 2,000 years. From Jesus to now is 2,000 years. That's six days 
And the seventh day will be the Sabbath day. That, that thousand years will be the rest. And we're right there. We're right there. It's amazing. All right. The next stop is the rapture of the church. That's what we're waiting for. It's going to happen really soon. Let's get to some comments of the day, okay? Because I feel like I'm going to run out of time. Kelly Raber. What I find interesting, Tom, is that all of us here living in these times for a reason. I can remember reading the book of Revelation when I was in elementary school. I read it alone in my bedroom and I was terrified. I remember finishing the last words of Christ and thinking, dear God, I hope I'm not alive when this comes. I'm 46 now. Looks like I'm going to see it. Praise Jesus. I've always had him on my side through everything. I'm comforted in these times more than ever. Me too. Kelly, me too. I'm comforted more than ever. Because once you realize he's totally in control, he's for us, not against us. He loves us so much. And we are not appointed to wrath. Aaron Davis. For years I knew about the rapture and was terrified of it. And I just knew I would be left. Now since I've given my heart back to Jesus, I'm not afraid anymore. Because I know for real this time I truly have been saved. It's an awesome feeling. Thanks, Aaron. It is an awesome feeling. When you truly belong to Jesus, you have to remember you can't worry about the rapture or end times. Because you belong to him. He's going to take you. Like it or not, he's taking you in the rapture. Nick Bailu. Hi, Tom. The earth is in birth pangs. Look at all the earthquakes, flooding, famines, hurricanes, hunger, people against people. The whole earth is in pain, waiting to release us to heaven. God bless the whole river family. Thank you, Nick. It's beautiful and so true. The whole, tr it's a, the whole world is just boiling. How much can it go on? How much longer can it go on? April Hall. Even Jesus said he's coming soon. When people get upset about the time frame, I can't understand what there is to be upset about. Our Savior is coming back to get us. What is it? What is not to be excited about? Maranatha, brothers and sisters, we're going home soon. So true, April. So true. Oh, I love this comment. I love this comment. It was left on the video right before I hit record. I, I found this one. It was left like a minute before I hit record on this video. Tom, please don't quit making videos. I'm 14 years old and look forward to every day when you post new videos. I love watching them and growing my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Stan, you are the man. 14 years old, loving the Lord. Oh my goodness. It's so beautiful. There's nothing more beautiful than that. Mary Lynn Tully. I know who I was before Christ. I would have accepted a chip in my brain if it would have promised to fix me somehow. There are many who will take it for the promise of being made whole. It's sad, but it's true. You're right, Mary Lynn. You're right. They'll line up for it. I like this one. Angela Cohen. They are such liars. The entire world population can fit in the state of Alaska comfortably with more room than people have in New York State. It's true. It's true. They try to tell you the population of the earth is exploding and we can't survive this. And and I always say, you know, I ever fly around the world. Do you ever fly across the country, even just this country, and look out the window as you're flying across the country? <laughs> we're doing okay Jesus is coming back to get us soon and I'm telling you right now if you don't know him you're playing Russian roulette if you don't know him you are gonna the moment the rapture happens if you've watched this video to this point and you reject Jesus or you put him on a shelf for so many years that you don't even know if you ever knew him 
the moment the rapture happens, you're going to pray for this time. Give me that time back. Let me just give me, Lord, please take me to the day before yesterday so I can say yes to you, so I can trust in your finished work. Oh, Lord, please, I don't want to be here for the seven years. But once the rapture happens, there's not going to be a late bus. You know, there's not going to be a another rapture two days later for the people who regret it. If you don't belong to Jesus, the time is now. The day of salvation is now. Jesus left a throne in heaven to come and fix the problem of sin. Jesus, the only begotten Son of God who spoke the worlds into existence, spoke the entire universe. Do you realize how massive the universe is? He spoke it into, his, into existence with the power of his words. He's the one who came down here to die for our sins. He lived a perfect life. He never sinned. And then they treated him like a criminal. Pushed thorns into his head. Whipped him. Mutilated him beyond recognition. Put him on the cross. And he shed the most beautiful blood that's ever been shed. The blood that takes all of our sins, past, present, and future, and the blood is so powerful, it takes all the sins of every person that was ever created. It took care of all their sins. But you have to believe that in order to be saved. Then after he bled, he was buried in that tomb and he rose again. And he's coming back. That's the gospel. Whenever you see the word gospel, it means good news. There's good news. Once again... We can spend eternity with God the way he had intended it to be when he created Adam and Eve. He had intended for them to not sin and spend eternity with them. He had a plan. They messed it up. Don't blame them. We would have all done it if we were in their shoes. All, all of us would have. But once again, because of Jesus and what he did on the cross, we get paradise. We don't deserve it. We can't do anything to improve on it. All we can do is admit we're sinners, that we do wrong things. We have evil, lustful, gross thoughts. We admit that and we say, wow, God sent his only son to the earth to die and shed his blood to take care of the sin problem. I want that. I believe in that. The moment you believe in that gospel, that good news, you're saved. And you're going to be in paradise with him forever. It's unfair to Jesus. <laughs> Grace is so unfair to Jesus. It's an unearned gift that we get. He's like, I did everything, guys. Just have to believe in it. You have to believe in what I did, my finished work. Because your works are filthy rags. It's incredible. Unfair to Jesus. How can we ever, how can we ever repay him for what he did for us? We can't. We can praise him for eternity. And there will, there will never be a moment where we're like, okay, we've even the score. <laughs> never. It's beautiful. But that's what I've got for you today. Tomorrow, I will be back with another prayer video. And uh, then Monday, God willing, I will be here. I'm really hoping not here on Monday. I'd rather get raptured this weekend, wouldn't you? But we got to remember the lost ones, the left behind. We pray for them as we look up and we watch and we wait for his return. Okay, I love you guys.